Hello fellow car lovers and welcome back to That Car Vlog channel. If you don't already know, my name is Andy and the vehicle today we're featuring is a 2022, the current generation Lexus IS350 F Sport all wheel drive. In today's video, I'll take you guys on a full inside outside walk around tour of this vehicle, talk about all of its specs, all of its features, and uh, then we'll take this thing out on the road and see what it's like to drive. This is, this is a really cool car. You guys are really gonna like this. But before we begin, special thanks to West Chevrolet of Alcoa, Tennessee for providing the vehicle for today's review. When you're done watching this video, be sure to check them out at the link in the description below. Now I'll start, of course, with the exterior styling of the vehicle. And starting right here up front at the nose, if we come down here and look at these headlights, these are really good looking headlights. You can see the LED signals right above that L-shaped or check-shaped LED running light. And below that is the optional triple beam LED headlights that you can get on this car. Very good looking. We step back, you can see the now iconic, if not somewhat controversial, Lexus spindle grille, although this is definitely not as big as a lot of the SUVs. And I think Lexus is starting to tone those down as well. Coming down the side here, here's the side profile. You can see it's got nice lines. It's got some good sporty looking design to the side of it. You do have 19 inch wheels front and rear, although they are staggered widths. You have two 35s in the front, two 65s in the rear. Now these are your standard split five spokes. You can also get optional split seven spoke BBS wheels. Here at the rear, you get kind of those little wing here. This black against the white looks really good. You do still have an actual Lexus logo. This is not one of the models that they started just spelling out Lexus on the back of. You still get the logo. And below that, you can see you get the big long light bar that runs all the way across, LED tail and brake lights. LED reverse lights, unfortunately still incandescent turn signals, but I'm not gonna knock them too hard for that. See down here on the trunk lid, it does say IS350 all wheel drive. That's what this is. You can also get these in a rear wheel drive version if burnouts and such are your thing, but all wheel drive is there for the grip. Down below that, the black panel here has what appears to be just kind of a somewhat rear diffuser. I think it's more for the looks really. You do get dual exhaust, however, on this car. They don't sound too awful bad for the engines in this car. We'll get to that in a little bit. Stepping back away from the vehicle, and as you can see, it is a very good looking car. I think Lexus did a great job designing this thing. It looks sporty, it looks aggressive. It looks like the fun car that it is. Zooming in here on the mirrors, you can see you've got your body colored bottom and the top is black. That's kind of an S Sport thing. And you can see the LED signal integrated into the mirror. It's a very long piece pretty much the whole width of the mirror. That really does look pretty good. Up on the top, you see you do have a sunroof on this car, but it is not a panoramic sunroof, just a normal sunroof. Okay, so I wanna talk about entering the vehicle and the locks and unlocks and whatnot. And to begin, I wanna talk about the key fob. So here is your standard Lexus key fob that comes with your IS. You see you got the Lexus logo on the back. You got four basic buttons, lock, unlock, trunk, and panic. And your lock button also doubles as your remote starter, which is pretty awesome. Whoever had this car before got this leatherish, Key cover, protective case, is black with this red stitching, looks really good. I think that's kind of a neat touch. Protects your key and it looks cool. For getting in the car, of course, you can either unlock everything with the buttons or because this is a Toyota, just put your hand on the back side of the handle and it unlocks the car and you can open it right up. And to lock it, you can either push the button inside, push this button, or just tap right here and it locks the car. It's a Lexus, but it's also a Toyota. Another feature on this fob that I mentioned a second ago is remote start. It may not appear that it has it, but anyone who knows Toyota and Lexus knows that if the vehicle is equipped, the remote start is hidden in the key fob. So you just press your lock button three times and hold on the third press. With the car already locked, one, two, three, and hold. Now it is probably the longer remote startup sequence of out of pretty much any vehicle that I've ever tested remote start on because it doesn't have a dedicated button. But it's still cool that they hide it in there. It doesn't clutter the fob up with buttons. And for those who know they have it, you know you've got it right there. Now the one part of that I'm not really all that crazy about, and it may be a safety feature just in case someone does figure out a way to steal the car when it's running without the key inside of it, is if you do push your hand behind here to open the door, it turns the car off when you open the door and then you have to restart it on the inside. But it's still very handy should you need to, you know, start it up and warm it up on a cold morning or cool it down on a hot day. As we open the door and enter the vehicle, you're going to see this one here is in all black. You can also get the spec with white with a red interior, which is really good looking interior. Here on the door panel, you can see there are a few different textures. You have this interesting kind of cross hash kind of replicate the grill here on this panel of the door card. Up top, a little bit somewhat soft touch. Down here, of course, you get a bit, a bit of padding for your armrest. 
get a storage pocket down here, and here's your speaker, which is part of the optional 17 speaker Mark Levinson sound system in this vehicle. Here's your door sill plate, it's got the S-board, it looks like this brushed stainless or something like that, looks really, really cool. Here you have your 12-way adjustable perforated leather seats. These are decent looking seats, they got a little bit of contrast with white stitching in them, and they do have some pretty good bolstering because this is pretty much a sports sedan. Now you do have all of your power options in this vehicle, Power windows auto up and down on all four power locks and power mirrors. Unfortunately, they are not power folding mirrors, which is kind of interesting. You do have three seat memory settings as well, so up to three people can get in this car and set it how they want. Down here to the left of the wheel, you got a button for your, for your odometer as well as to brighten and dim your gauge cluster. Of course, here's the button for your auto high beams. This camera view button, which we'll talk about in a minute. And ASC, this is a sound control knob. This car will actually pipe in engine noises with acceleration and you can tell it how much of that you want or none. Looking at the steering wheel, it's pretty nice. It's black with some contrasted stitching. It feels pretty good in the hands. It's got this perforated leather here and it is heated. Here you have some basic controls. Here's your, of course, for your menu control and the gauge cluster. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Here's your button for your lane keep assist and of course your adaptive cruise control. Over here's your buttons for phone, stereo, infotainment, voice controls, that kind of thing. Down here is your traditional cruise control stock. I believe some people are saying this is a bit of an outdated stock, but it's here and it works just fine. On the back here, you can see there are paddle shifters. This vehicle is equipped with a six speed automatic transmission for the all wheel drive. Your rear wheel drive actually gets an eight speed automatic, but in the S-Port you get these nice paddle shifters. We'll test those out later and see just how those do. Up here, high mounted on the dash is your engine start stop button. We'll hit the brake and hit that button and watch everything come to life. You can see the gauge cluster displays this neat animation on startup. It's kind of cool. And now let's talk about this gauge cluster because this is a fully digital gauge cluster. There's no analog here. So right now in its current configuration, you can see, hey, we are in eco mode. You got your big center tachometer with your digital speed in the middle, and you got your information display down below that speed. Now using the controls on the right side of the wheel, we can cycle through those. Unfortunately, it is just up and down. So you can see right now it's displaying your current and average fuel economy. There's your fuel range, gear position. So if I throw this down and drive, you're gonna see, it's gonna show you what gear you're in, what gear you're starting in. I guess it believes we need to start out in second gear in eco mode, put it in park and that goes away. And then from there, you get tire pressure monitoring. You can change between miles and kilometers per hour and right back to fuel economy. Now, right here on the steering wheel on the right side, there's this little button that looks like pages. If we press that button, the tack is going to physically slide to the right. And here you're gonna see your settings menu. And this is gonna show you all the different things you can set for the car. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of these because a lot of these are pretty much basic Toyota things. Some of them are a little more specific to this car being a sporty vehicle, but for the most part, it's all Toyota. Of course, you can go also into vehicle settings and reset that as well as meter settings. If you want to make that disappear, just hit that page button on the steering wheel again, that goes away and your tack slides back to the center and now you get your other gauges. You get your fuel to the right, your temp to the left, your overall odometer down there on the bottom left. It all looks really cool. All right, so now you can see we are, the car is in normal driving mode. There's not displaying anything special. This is what your cluster looks like. If I turn the drive mode knob to the left to select eco this is what it looks like now if i turn it to the right to select sport it gets even cooler more aggressive it really really accentuates that red line and as you see it is fully digital if i rev the engine you see that needle moving it is a full digital gauge cluster this is really neat okay now coming over here to the center of the vehicle this is your optional 10.3 inch touchscreen display your standard is right around eight inches it's a bit smaller but this is of course your 10.3 you can see we do have Dual display here, you got your map over here, you have a bunch of settings buttons on the right, you got your radio controls. Okay, so I'm not entirely certain what I did there. <laughs> Sorry about that. But now we got the map big here on the left, you got a display on the right that shows your radio pre your radio stations. Click here, you get trip, you get all kinds of trip information. Click on that one, trip, trip information. And of course, this is a digital display and control of your climate controls, which is kind of redundant because down below we do have physical controls. Now I can switch, push this button, full screen, big map, looks really nice. Or we can bring that side display in to see the other things on the screen. But I do like the big map, that's really nice. Scrolling this map, it's, it's okay, it's decently responsive to the touch, it's not the best, but it's definitely nowhere near the worst. Now looking back up at the screen, it does have the camera system in it. 
If I throw it in reverse here, we get our backup camera. It's definitely not the greatest thing in the world, but it is there, it's useful. Push this button, we can toggle between a regular view and kind of a more wide angle type of view. You do get your top down view, which is awesome, and trajectory lines that turn with the wheel. Of course, you can turn those on and off with this button right here. Select what you want to see. I like having the full lines. Now, if I throw it back in park and hit that camera button on the left side of the wheel that I showed you a minute ago, now it's going to pull up this strange rotational around the car view. It's kind of odd. It's the greatest thing in the world. It's not repositionable. It's just you just pause it. If I tap this button here, it's going to throw it up with a bird's eye view. And it's kind of oval. This is kind of what Toyota and Lexus are doing now. It's not really the greatest thing, but it is there. Now, if I have it in drive and I hit the camera button, now it's actually going to give me this view out the front of the car. You see there is actually a camera in the grill that I didn't show earlier, but there is a camera in the grill above the Lexus logo, and that's what we're seeing right now. You still get your top-down view, of course, and when you turn the wheel, you get trajectory, trajectory lines over there on the top-down. You can, of course, turn that off so you don't see those at all. You get these nice little corner indicators to say, tell you when you're getting close to hitting something. So that's a decent thing to see. You can see that white truck just passed in front of us, and the camera picked that up. Is that Jeep right there? And there it is on the screen. So it's kind of useful, especially if you're worried about parking and uh, hitting the curbs. If I hit the button again, now I'm still getting a front view, but it's kind of a zoomed in top down view, which can be useful once again for not hitting curbs or just, you know, trying to get a better view of what's around you. Coming down from that, here's of course your climate control vents with the analog clock in the center. Now these center vents are these rectangular units, unlike these sides over here that are circular, which look really nice. These are just rectangular with the clock in the center. It looks good though. Down below that, here's all of your climate controls. And yes, these are all physical controls. All these settings for your fan speed, you turn that up and down with this button right here. Your temperature controls are these touch sensitive slider here. As you can see as I slide up and down, the temperature does change. That's really the only capacitive control for the climate control in this car. Everything else is nice and physical. I really do like that. Of course, you get your big hazard button down here, which flashes with the hazard lights, really neat. Below that, here's your stereo controls. Most of your things, most of your controls obviously are gonna be up in the screen, but you do have a physical power and volume knob, physical tuner, a CD slot, which is kind of starting to die out in the car world, so that's really cool. And down here, you can show it's showing that you do have the optional Mark Levinson premium sound system, and it is a good sounding system. I have played with it a little bit. Below that, we do have heated and ventilated seats, both sides, and a heated steering wheel. Very, very nice. Coming back from that, on the right here is your drive mode selector. I showed you before, you turn left for eco, right for sport, push for normal. You do have a snow mode, you do have traction control off, and a brake hold button. To the left of that, here is your gear selector. Nothing special here. This is pretty much your standard Toyota gear selector. Our Highlander has it. The same generation Corolla has it. Just pull like that. It's in the gear. There's park. They all have this shift pattern on this little plate here. Back from that, dual cup holders, always nice to have because we are Americans. And here is your redundant controls for the infotainment system. Now, like I just showed a moment ago, it is a touchscreen, but you also have this trackpad system, which a lot of journalists do not like. It, it is this trackpad, and as you swipe through the options on the screen, you can see I can do that right now, it does offer a little bit of tactic feedback, a little vibration, if you will. It is, of course, also clickable. So if we go down here to this corner, scroll down and click, it's gonna put that map up full screen. Here's my AC, here's my climate controls, back to full screen. So it is an okay system. It takes take a minute to get used to scrolling around on the screen like this. You can see now it's actually hovering over the map. It's got this little cursor here and then, oh, there we are over here to uh, offer you more controls. It is an okay way of controlling the overtainment. It's obviously not the best. Touch screen is preferred. But maybe if you're short, you can't quite reach that. You don't want to lean too far forward while you're driving, whatever. You do have this where you can just rest your arm right here on the armrest and you can control it from here. So it's not the worst thing in the world, I don't think, but a lot of people don't like it. Now above that, you can see there is this menu button. If we click on the menu button, then it's gonna show you some options right here. We can scroll through those options. Here's your apps. We click on audio, go up here to source. Now, I've been told that this system does have wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto instead of wireless. So if you're one that prefers wireless, sorry, this is wired. I'm not finding that option in the menu. Maybe I just haven't really scrolled through enough of it, but I do believe it does have those two things integrated. Going back from our interesting controls here, 
open up the, the center console lid and you do have a little bit of storage it's not incredibly deep you're not going to get too much in here but there is some storage you do have a 12 volt round right here as well as two usb a jacks and an auxiliary jack to plug your devices in to pipe your audio into the car over here on the passenger side, you do have a lockable glove box. Push this button right here and it drops open. And once you remove the four inch thick, okay, maybe it's only three. Once you remove the incredibly thick owner's manual, you can see this is what your storage looks like in here. It's not insanely huge. And once you put the owner's manual, <laughs> and once you put the owner's manual back in a slot, it does rob most of that storage. But you do have some space for your paperwork and maybe even some actual gloves if you're one of those people. As we go up here to the ceiling, you're gonna see here's your controls for your sunroof, open and close, your sunroof vent, pretty standard things in most vehicles. You do have an SOS button, it's under this little cover, so you have to open that so as to not accidentally press it. Here's your interior lighting. As you can see, there's no buttons that you can see to turn on your interior map lights and such. That's because all you have to do is just touch the lens right here, touch, and your map lights come on, touch again, there they are, touch them again, they turn off. And your center light's the same way. Touch it and it kind of turns on. Touch again and it fades off. Kind of neat. You don't have any of those buttons. You just tap, 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 tap. That's a way to, for a kid to get in trouble. Tap, 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 tap. And behind that, you see you pull this cover open and there is your standard sunroof. Once again, not panoramic in the Lexus IS. Sitting in the back of the Lexus IS, I am a, just a hair over six feet tall. And you can see I'm right up against the seat. Both these seats are pretty much situated how I'm going to drive the car. I could probably move it up a little bit, but I'm pretty comfortable in that position. So you, you can get back here. You can get adults back here, but they're probably going to prefer the front seats over the rear. Of course, what adult wouldn't? Kids, I don't see a problem at all. As taller kids, you might want to move the seats up a little bit. For the rear on the back of the console, you do have climate vents. However, they do not have their own climate zone, so there are no controls back here. You do have separate dome lights in the rear, but they are just put physical push buttons. They are still LED but they are not that capacitive, capacitive touch lenses like we saw up front. Continuing to look at the rear seat, but from the outside this time, we pull the center armrest down, which of course then deletes your center seat. And you can see it's an armrest. And if we push this button here, you get cup holders that pop out. And just simply push those back in and they hide right away. Okay, going back outside to access the trunk space. Now, of course you do have a release in the interior. You do have a button on the fob or there's a button right here, just below the Lexus logo, hit that and you can raise up the trunk. You see, I've got some of my gear in here. Just ignore that. This opens up to 10.8 cubic feet of cargo space. So not exactly the biggest thing in the world. Of course, this is not a large sedan, but it's still pretty practical. You can also see way up here inside, Velcro to the side of the trunk. You do have this neat first aid kit. It is embossed with the Lexus logo. That's kind of cool. I'm just kind of stick that right back here. You can probably also see right here, there's this long leather zippered pouch thing. If we unzip that, you have a cargo net. It's kind of a neat addition to the car. And if I pick up on the trunk floor here, which I'm not going to do because of the amount of things on it, it does have a compact spare tire. No, it's not full size, but nothing comes with full size anymore. But at least it's not a tire inflator kit. It is an actual spare tire. All right, now let's take a minute and talk about powertrain, trim options, and pricing, that kind of thing. Now, your Lexus IS lineup is pretty vast, beginning with the IS 300. That comes with a two-liter four-cylinder engine that produces 241 horsepower. Comes with a starting price of about just under $41,000. Now, side note, I am going to talk, talk about 2023 figures and pricing, although this is a 22 model. It's the same car. I will be talking, as this is 2023, about... 2023 numbers. Now, if you step up to your IS300 all wheel drive, you're going to step up to a 3.5 liter V6, which is actually this engine you're looking at right here. However, it is a detuned version creating 260 horsepower. That's going to run you right around $42,000, dollars Now, all these, of course, are starting prices before options. Please keep that in mind. Now, there is a IS350 S Sport design, which is just a little bit lesser of a car than this SF Sport. I'm not talking about that one in this video. I feel it's too similar of a vehicle to talk about. Next up is your IS350 F Sport, the non all wheel drive, the rear wheel drive version. It has the same three and a half liter V6, but now it creates 311 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque. Starting price is right around $45,000 for that car. Now the rear wheel drive car comes with an eight speed automatic transmission. Then of course you have the IS350 S Sport all wheel drive, which is what this vehicle here is. 
This is, of course, the same 3.5 liter V6, 311 horsepower, 280 pound-feet of torque. However, it gets a six-speed automatic transmission. It does have those paddle shifters, though. We'll see how those are in a minute. Now, your all-wheel drive version, this one right here, 2023, is going to begin right around $47,000 before options. Then you can step up beyond this to the IS500 F Sport Performance. That vehicle, and I wish this was that vehicle, has the five liter V8 engine, naturally aspirated. All of these are naturally aspirated, except for the uh, two liter four cylinder, it is turboed. But all of these are naturally aspirated. 5.0 liter V8, producing 472 horsepower, 395 pound feet of torque, with a starting price of $58,000. Now this one here is right in the middle, pretty much. It is your F Sport all wheel drive with the V6. It's still got plenty of power. All right, enough talking about specs and stuff. Let's get this thing on the road. All right, let's get this IS350 all wheel drive out here on the road and see what driving it is like. And apparently that sunroof being partially open is going to put a glare of light on my face, so I apologize. Anyway, Lexus IS 350 all-wheel drive. Now, before I really get into the power, let's just talk about real quick the basics of the car. Now, of course, this is a Lexus, so it's pretty much, it is a Toyota. It's not pretty much a Toyota, it is a Toyota. So first and foremost, you get the Toyota reliability out of that three and a half liter V6. It's the same engine that's in the Camry, pretty certain it's probably the same engine that's in our 2018 Highlander. So a proven powertrain, and of course a proven brand as well. Toyota Lexus is always known for their reliability. It comes with your standard complement of safety features. Of course you got your driver's assist feature, your lane keep assist which monitors the lines and nudges you back in if you drift. Of course you got your adaptive cruise control, pre-collision warning, backup camera, parking sensors, that kind of thing. You've got blind spot monitoring, all that good stuff. So you got your standard complement of stuff in this car. Now your rear view mirror up here, it is just a standard rear view mirror. You're not getting that uh, digital camera style rear view that Toyota is starting to adapt that General Motors did first. Uh, I know the new Highlander and things like that do have it, but this doesn't. From a visibility standpoint, nothing to complain about really. You've got good visibility out the rear. Front's great. You got pretty, I mean, you've got pretty good visibility all around. It's not a big car, so you don't really have to worry that much about it. It's nice. Comfort, it's actually a pretty comfortable car as well. Now I do have kind of a big butt, you know, I'm a thick individual, so I do fit a little snugly into the seat. However, these side bolsters for the back actually hug me pretty well. That is something I do like about this. And of course you got the heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, so you got those nice little features for when it's cold outside or it's hot, you know, whatever the case may be. Your fuel economy ratings for your 350 all wheel drive are not amazing because this is an all-wheel drive car. It is kind of heavy, so right around 3,800 pounds, so you're pushing 4,000 pounds in this car. So it's not exactly the lightest vehicle in the world. Of course, it's not incredibly heavy, but you do still have that all-wheel drive system. Your city mileage is rated about 19, highway mid to upper 20s-ish. So you got a combined rating of about 22 MPG if, of course, you drive this thing conservatively and uh, yeah, I'm not sure how many people are gonna do that because this is a fun car. As far as handling, let's go ahead and test out handling. So we'll hit this turn here and let's see how she takes turns. This car actually handles quite nicely. Now these do come with S-Sport tuned suspension so they are a little bit better than of course your IS300 is going to be being a more low level standard vehicle. These things do actually handle pretty well. I mean, it's not right up there with the best of the best of the best. You know, it's not an exotic sports car or anything, but for a small to mid-sized four door sedan with a good amount of power, it handles pretty well. And the all wheel drive definitely helps. And of course, like I said before, if you want something even more sporty, you want to be able to get that rear end out, maybe do some burnouts, they do offer the rear wheel drive version with an eight speed automatic, and that might be more your speed, just depending on who you are. A nice tight turning circle, which is a very nice thing to have, of course. Makes it easy to turn around for the shooting this video. One feature I'm still having to decide whether or not I like is the turn signals. 
So if you click your left, for instance, it's gonna return back to home position, which is weird. It's kind of BMW-ish and I don't like it, but it's easily canceled by either making a turn, of course, or just lightly clicking it up in the opposite direction. So maybe a small annoyance depending on, you know, the individual. I think they should just leave them the way they've always been, but that's, that's me. Now we are currently in normal mode. Let's switch this thing over to sport mode. Now Lexus claims that the IS350 all wheel drive will do zero to 16 right around 5.7 seconds. I have seen other videos online where the reviewer tested it to 5.5, 5.8, in that range, depending on uphill, downhill, that kind of thing. So right around five and a half seconds should be the zero to 60 time for this car. I don't have a reliable way of testing that. So we're just gonna go for it. Now also there is no cruise control. So I'll just hold my brake, give a little bit of boost. And hey. And she is pretty quick. Now the engine noise you're hearing is a combination of the engine itself and the exhaust and the sound that's being piped in through the speakers. Now there is, again, there is a control over here where you can turn that off and we will go ahead and turn that completely off and see what it sounds like on a second acceleration run. Now this car does have very good steering. It feels nice. There's no on-center vagueness at all. As soon as you input, it responds. It turns nice and quickly. It is, it is a responsive steering system, which I do like. Gives you a lot of confident control over the steering of this car. All right, let's do another run now. I've turned the ASC, which is that sound control, completely off. And we're gonna see what it sounds like on a second acceleration run without the artificial engine noises. So a little bit of boost here. And you know what? I'm not gonna lie, I can't tell much of a difference. There may be a small difference, but I don't think you're getting very much noise out of that system. Still, it's a decent sound for a three and a half liter V6. I mean, for the engine out of a Toyota Camry, it's it actually sounds halfway decent. It's no Ford GT, it's no Nissan GTR. It's not that great sounding of a V6, but it's not terrible. Okay, so I did just put this thing back into normal mode. I want to see what it feels like there and go. I mean, yeah, it might be a little slower than in sport mode, but the launch, you still feel the launch from a stop. It's a nice car. This thing launches well, it's fast, it handles great. Put it back into sport mode because who wants normal? This is a fun, fun car to drive. There's one more thing I really want to test out and it's these paddle shifters. I've heard they're not the most responsive thing out there. Okay, so in sport mode, we're just gonna take off Let's pop it over in manual. We're just gonna take off and see what happens. So here we go. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and of course six if you really want to save some gas. So they are definitely not the most responsive thing in the world, but this is not a dual clutch automatic transmission out of a supercar or even a Corvette. It's just a standard torque converter automatic. You are gonna get at least a very small delay between when you pull that paddle and when it changes gears. And that's just how it's gonna be. I mean, it's just, it's a torque converter automatic. Now I think the one part I didn't talk about is the ride comfort itself as in, you know, the suspension comfort. And while it's definitely not the worst thing out there, it also isn't the softest suspension out there. You're not getting every bump absorbed. This is a sports sedan and it feels like it. it's going to ride over bumps and little imperfections in the road and you're going to feel each one of them although it's not incredibly harsh but it is definitely tuned for handling. It is definitely tuned for acceleration. It's not tuned for comfort although you still get a little bit of comfort out of it which is a, a nice little thing to have. This car can offer you a little bit of both worlds although it is definitely more sports car than it is comfortable cruising sedan. Not that you couldn't cruise in this thing, because you totally can. Okay, you know I gotta just do one more. Here we go and go. Oh, and that all wheel drive, there's no wheel slippage whatsoever from a stop. It just, it just grips, it hooks, and it hauls, man. This thing is fast. Oh, this car is so much fun. 
There's a bird just strutting across the road. I'm having to wait for it to finish strutting across the road. Anyway, this thing is, this thing is a blast. I'm not gonna lie. This, <laughs> if I could spend $50,000 on a luxury sports sedan, I might put this on my shopping list. This is nice. Oh, I don't want to give it back either, but I've got to, so let's go, uh, let's go wrap this thing up. There's one thing about the footwell of this car that annoys me greatly. And it is this massive hump right here. And I believe this is because of the all wheel drive system. Normally automakers try to put that in the passenger footwell, but here it's in the driver footwell and it, your leg is right up on this thing and bending around to that accelerator pedal. But I'm not gonna lie, when driving spiritedly, I barely even notice it. But if you're just cruising around, that might get a little bit annoying. All right, folks, so there you have it. That's the 2022 slash 2023 Lexus IS350 all wheel drive F Sport. This thing is fun. This is a cool car. It looks good. It's fun to drive and it's pretty luxurious inside. It's very sporty. And I think the best thing about this car is you're getting that 311 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated V6 engine. There's no turbos or superchargers involved. Not that those aren't cool, but you're getting this fun driving experience from a naturally aspirated engine. Now, no, it's not an IS500 with the <laughs> five liter V8, which would be amazing. And maybe hopefully one day I get to test one of those out too, because, oh man, that'd be great. But for now, Lexus IS350 all wheel drive F Sport. Once again, special thanks to West Chevrolet of Alcoa, Tennessee for allowing me to use this vehicle for today's review. Once you're done here, make sure to go down to the description and click the link and check them out. They're great folks and Alan and the guys in the used car department are amazing for letting me review their vehicles. If you like this video as much as I enjoyed making it, make sure you go check out the rest of the videos on my channel. And if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel and let's get those numbers up on, on the subscriber and view count, shall we? Also, follow me over on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. I don't post as much as I'd like to over there, but it's a great way to get notified when videos go up, aside from, of course, YouTube notifications. Anyways, thanks y'all so much for watching, and uh, you have a great day. I, I know I am.